Well, this is True News Headlines. I'm Doc Burkhardt. And I'm Kerry Kinsey. It's Tuesday, October 29th, 2019. And these are your uncensored news headlines. Well, that was fast. Just 48 hours after President Trump announced the death of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, he tweeted out this message. Just confirmed that Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's number one replacement has been terminated by American troops. Most likely would have taken the top spot. Now he is also dead. It looks like the president was referring to Abu Abdullah Kardash. He's a former Iraqi military officer during Saddam Hussein's rule. He was Baghdadi's right-hand man. Well, this comes just hours after video began circulating on social media that shows what is alleged to be a U.S. Special Forces operation in the Syrian town of Jerablus. That's inside the so-called safe zone established by Turkey's invasion of northern Syria. Now, locals are telling reporters that a family of Iraqi origin was taken away without putting up too much of a fight. And this comes less than 24 hours after lead ISIS spokesman Abu Hassan al-Mahajr was killed in the same area by U.S. and Kurdish forces. And dog two mortar rounds Monday hit a military base north of the Iraqi capital where U.S. troops are still deployed. Two rounds landed inside the Taji base and exploded, and a third landed outside it and did not detonate. No one was injured. Now, the attack, which was not claimed, comes as Iraq faces a wave of anti-government protest in Baghdad and in the south. Those protests forcing the government to impose a midnight curfew in Baghdad. During a joint press conference with U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has alleged Iran is preparing to establish missile bases throughout the Middle East to strike Israel. Iran is uh, seeking to develop now uh, precision-guided munitions, missiles that can hit uh, any target in the Middle East with a uh, circumference of uh, 5 to 10 meters. Uh, they are developing this in uh, uh, Iran. They want to place them in uh, Iraq uh, and in Syria and to convert uh, Lebanon's uh, arsenal of 130,000 statistical rockets uh, to precision-guided uh, munitions. They seek also to develop that and have already begun to put that in Yemen with the goal of reaching Israel from there too. Well, Deb, Deb Kafal is reporting its sources say near the, neither the U.S. nor Israel have an adequate answer for Iran's cruise missile and drone warfare tactics. As a result, the United States has begun moving highly sensitive elements and infrastructure to locations outside the range of Iran's missile batteries. Lebanon's Prime Minister Saad Hariri is resigning. He says he's come to a dead end in his effort to find a solution to stop nearly two weeks of protests that have gripped his country. Protesters have taken to the streets to celebrate his decision. Lebanon's President Michel Aoun says he will not issue a request for the cabinet to take on a caretaker role. He's not sure if he'll accept the PM's resignation. And in Israel, all eyes are on Hezbollah to see how it reacts to that new power vacuum. NATO's support and procurement agency has put out a request for bids for 78,000 sets of snow camouflage for winter operations. Now, with winter preparing to set in for much of the Northern Hemisphere, that might not sound too alarming until you read the fine print. NATO wants these uniforms to withstand temperatures to a low, as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. And to shield wearers from strong winds and snow drifts. Yeah, Doc, and that means NATO is gearing up for Arctic warfare on a large scale. With a single tweet, Russia's mission to NATO took a stab at the group's purely defensive policy. Now, it suggests maybe worth adding some history on World War II with a reference to Stalingrad and a photo of the infamous turning point of the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. China and the U.S. are set to sign the Phase 1 trade deal next month. President Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping will meet face-to-face -face November 17th on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Chile. And a sudden change, China has signaled ignorant, e eagerness to adopt new protections for U.S. companies' intellectual property 
which has been a sticking point in the past. For the latest in news and information from a Christian worldview, visit truenews.com. This is True News Headlines. Praiser, Christian music streaming. Praiser's music streaming app provides listeners with 34 music channels of various genres of Christian music from around the world, anywhere, anytime, any device. Family-friendly Christian music. Praiser's hand-curated music channels include CCM, hymns, southern gospel, alternative, rock, hip-hop, gospel choirs, R&B, singer-songwriter, Caribbean, classic CCM, EDM, children's music, and much more. Praiser is free and funded by an enthusiastic community of listeners. Family-friendly music with no ads. Users can listen to Praiser on smartphones, tablets, desktops, Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV. Praiser offers the largest variety of Christian music on one platform. Download the app on your favorite platform or sign up on Praiser.com to start streaming today. Praiser, Christian music streaming. Welcome back to True News Headlines. Here are some more stories that we're looking at today. Carrie? Well, Doc, famous Italian journalist and Catholic convert Vittorio Massori has accused Pope Francis of laying his hands on that which the Pope instead should be defending. He's concerned the pontiff seeks to destroy Catholic doctrine. He said he's interviewed some bishops and cardinals who disagree with the Pope but are too afraid to speak out. Well, Christmas is coming a few weeks early for UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. That's because opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has finally agreed to an early election. We are ready for an election. We're going to go out there with a very strong message of how we transform our society to end inequality and injustice and deal with the devastating poverty that so many people face. We always said we wanted an election. We do want an election. But we wanted no deal to be taken off the table. We've now had confirmation from all 28 EU member states that no deal is off the table. So we're going to go out there with the biggest campaign this party has ever mounted. While a date has not yet been set, as widely believed it will have some time in the second week of December, polling in the UK suggests the Prime Minister's Conservative Party is set to make major gains at the expense of Mr. Corbyn's Labour Party. While well, promoting his new album, Jesus is King, rapper Kanye West told radio host Big Boy what he really thinks about Democrats. Bro, we brainwashed out here, bro. Come on, man, this is a free man talking. Democrats had us voting Democrats for food stamps for years, bro. What are you talking about? Guns in the 80s, taking the fathers out the home, Plan B, lowering our votes, making us abort our children. God should not kill. I can't tell y'all how to feel, but what I can tell you honestly is how I feel. Well, he went on to say that expecting him to vote for someone based off the color of his own skin is the most racist thing a person could ever tell him. Yeah, but Kanye's new album, Doc, has already had another cultural impact. Burger King decided to take a pot shot at fast food competitor Chick-fil-A. The Christian-owned chicken sandwich seller is the subject of the rapper's song, Closed on Sunday. Burger King tweeted out, open on Sunday. The backlash was immediate. Now, most responses slammed Burger King for only seeking to criticize its competitors. One person wrote, quote, I'd rather have a glass of water for lunch on Sunday and wait for Chick-fil-A to open on Monday morning than eat, a bur eat at Burger King, unquote. Well, for the record, Chick-fil-A recently became the third largest fast food chain in the U.S., while Burger King is the sixth largest. Well, the Democrats' support for abortion became an issue when former Vice President Joe Biden attended Sunday morning mass at a church in South Carolina. Father Robert Morey of St. Anthony Church in Florence refused to allow Mr. Biden to participate in communion because of his stance on the murder of unborn children. Now, Father Morey told reporters afterward, Holy Communion signifies we are with, uh, one with God, each other, and the church. Our actions should reflect that. Any public figure who advocates for abortion places himself or herself outside of church teaching. I will keep Mr. Biden in my prayers, unquote. The former vice president's campaign won't even confirm whether or not he even attended the church last weekend. Mm -hmm. 
Well, a 50-year-old social studies teacher from New Jersey has been arrested for sending text messages to a student soliciting a sexual relationship. Sean DeGeneva, who has publicly identified as homosexual, was also advisor to Wachung Hills Regional High School's Gay Straight Alliance. He also had advocated for showing cartoon pornography in the classroom. Mission America founder, founder Linda Harvey has published an opinion piece for LifeSite News exposing the links between drag queens and Satanism and the occult. She writes, not only are they attempting to groom young children for pedophilia with their story hours at public libraries, they're also keenly attuned to the dark spirits of the Halloween season and willing to do those spirits' bizarre, depraved bidding. A University of Chicago doctoral graduate is facing severe backlash over a survey he conducted regarding biologists' views on when human life begins. Steve Jacobs surveyed nearly 5,600 biologists, 96 percent of whom affirmed that life begins at the moment of fertilization. Of those surveyed, 89 percent identified as politically liberal, 85 percent as pro-choice, 63 percent is non-religious. And of course, not surprisingly, Dr. Jacobs received a number of angry responses to his findings. He was accused of being a member of the Ku Klux Klan and of pushing a pro-life agenda with his questions. Ultimately, he concluded that he doesn't believe the abortion debate can be bridged because of the mistrust and because both sides see the stakes so high but for very different reasons. Well, Doc, the U.S. Supreme Court has declined to hear the case of a Christian high school student who was forced to write an Islamic profession of faith as part of her homework. Kaylee Wood was required to write down the Shahada, which declares Allah as the only God and Muhammad as the messenger of Allah. Her attorneys from the Thomas More Law Center argued that that violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. But the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals decided the assignment was merely part of a secular comparative analysis of Islam, not an endorsement of the religion. Ms. Wood says she requested an alternative assignment, but that her request was denied. She refused to complete the assignment and was given a failing grade. Well, the lawsuit Nick Sandman has filed against the Washington Post has been revived after the federal judge hearing the case reversed himself. Previously, District Court Judge William Bertelsman blocked the Kentucky Catholic students' $250 million defamation suit. He has allowed discovery to begin in the lawsuit, a decision that could have major implications for similar suits filed against NBC and CNN. We each stay on TrueNews.com. We receive prayer requests from viewers and listeners just like you. And we love to hear from you and join together with you for God to answer your prayers as well. Now, we pray over each of those requests on a regular basis. And I'd like to share one of those with you now. Dear Rick, I grew up in a Christian home but rebelled hard against my parents. I got into marijuana at 10 years old and was doing crystal meth and ecstasy by 15. I never bought into the lie of evolution because common sense tells you that there is no way all of this complexity and beauty came from nothing. After committing a crime in order to get drugs, I was sitting in a jail cell. And there I remembered what someone told me about praying for wisdom and, and understanding. When I woke up the next morning, the same music videos that I had loved the day before now seemed repulsive. And ever since then, my walk with the Lord has been growing, but sometimes rough. Please pray to wish me Godspeed and that I'm able to muster up some courage and try to win some souls for the name of Jesus, whose blood even an old junkyard like me. God bless and please don't ever stop what you're doing. And that's from our friend Jordan. Well, Jordan, when the Holy Spirit indwells in us, it changes everything. I know what you mean about the music. After high school in 1977, I saw about 15 rock concerts at the Omni in Atlanta. Bands like Led Zeppelin, Queen, Kiss, Boston, Aerosmith, and Ted Nugent, among others. Since I became a believer, I don't have any desire to listen to that kind of music now. Just praise music and preaching for me. Your testimony of redemption is powerful. And the fact that you have your eyes focused on Jesus Christ and the Great Commission is impressive. Stay in the Word and keep bringing the lost to Christ. 
Galatians 2.20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, visit truenews.com and use the True News app on your smartphone to submit your own need for prayer. And be sure to visit truenews.com for more about our headlines. Yeah, and do us a favor. Please like and share this edition of True News Headlines on your social media channels. Also, please visit truenews.com to find out how you can support our news efforts. And thanks for joining us for True News Headlines today. Stay tuned for our True News Godcast coming up later this evening. Rick Walls is going to be telling you the latest headlines as it relates to the impeachment of Donald Trump. And then we're going to go around the world with the news and the comments that only Rick can give. So stay tuned for that. On behalf of Kerry Kinsey and the entire True News team, I'm Doc Burkhardt for True News Headlines. God bless you. God bless you.